Hello everyone. Good evening. Welcome back to the next session. Before getting into the core MDG, first we need to understand what is master data and what kinds of master data we do have in SAP basically. And what are the differences between the master data and transactional data? And also, do we have any other types of data in SAP? Then we will see what are the challenges of master data and how MDG can overcome those challenges. So to explain you or to give you some uh, understanding about master data, I will take one uh, business uh, scenario as an example. So those who are from SAP, so must be already aware of this master data. Or if you are from non-SAP or SAP, it doesn't matter. If you are already aware of master data, just uh, wait for some time. So I'll just explain what is master data for others who doesn't know what is master data. Okay, I'll take an example, some business scenario. There is a bakery. Usually in the bakery, um, they prepare so many things, uh, maybe uh, the cakes, puffs, and muffins, etc. Bakery is a business. Now, if they want to prepare all these items, they need some raw material, right? So, what are the raw materials required? Let's say the floor wheat floor or uh, maida, whatever it might be. And uh, they need sugar, they need milk, and for few, they still need curd, and they need the dry fruits, they need the creams. So all these raw materials are required to prepare various, various kinds of food products. Now let's say sugar is out of stock. So if something is out of stock, what they can do? They can go to uh, some supermarket or they can go to some vendor and purchase the sugar. If it is at our home, usually, uh, typically how much we use, uh, we purchase the sugar to uh, in our home, maybe a half kilo or a kilo max, not more than that. So we can simply go to the uh, supermarket, nearby supermarket and purchase that simple. That's very simple process. But they don't purchase a half kilo sugar or one kilo sugar. They purchase in bulk, maybe tons also based on their business. Let's say they have a requirement of 500 kgs of sugar is required. No, they can't get this 500 kgs of sugar from any supermarket. In fact, they don't purchase because the pricing difference. If they have the requirement, what they do typically? They identify the vendor. So that um, vendor might be uh, purchasing from another vendor also. It's possible. Or they might be manufacturing at their plant and selling. Either way is possible. So... This bakery identifies the vendor. So they might approach two, three vendors. How they can uh, finalize one vendor? Can anyone guess? Based on the price. Uh, price, okay. And Any other factors? Quantity. Best price, best price, who wants. Quantity, okay. Quality. And quality. Time. Quality, quality, of course. Time of delivery. Delivery time. Good. Any other factors? Uh, transportation. Maybe uh, trans transportation uh, facility. Good. So discount Any also comes factors? into the price, right? Discount yeah, also discount comes into everything. Uh, uh, everything is part, part of the okay, price okay. only. Yes. Okay. So uh, these are the various factors. If they want to finalize one vendor, different factors. To finalize a vendor. So they consider the pricing. The price is not the only factor. Of course, 
whether they can be able to deliver the required quantity they have the proper stock immediately available or not and what is the quality they are maintaining within how many days they can deliver and are they charging any extra uh, for the transportation or do they have the proper logistics everything has to be considered then they get the quotations from different different vendors and based on their quotations and based on their reputation and their credibility everything considering the let's say finalized the vendor this bakery has finalized one vendor once they finalize the vendor what is the next thing bakery generate the po purchase order they generate the po to vendor now vendor generates sales order so first purchase order from the bakery side meaning the customer bakery is the customer vendor is the uh, okay, let me make it some name i think uh, that would be better maybe abc bakeries and uh, finalize the vendor some xyz uh, uh, foods limited for example now to the vendor abc bakeries bakeries generate the po to the vendor xyz foods limited this vendor generates the sales order for 500 kgs of sugar same here also for 500 kgs of sugar please understand this business case carefully now they prepare uh, the required uh, uh, goods and everything once they, and they get into that into the transport and everything is done then goods will be transported abc bakeries then what will happen goods received okay bakeries will receive the goods and in parallel invoice generation also happens so once invoice is generated and once the goods are received by abc bakeries then payment abc bakeries has to pay to xyz foods limited there are credits debits everything that goes on okay once the goods are received and invoice is generated then the payment will be done from abc bakeries to xyz foods limited once the payment is done what next order closed sim so this is a, a simple scenario so here what are the various things involved first raw materials so what are the raw materials here the flour sugar milk curd dry fruits creams whatever it might be and the customer in this case who is the customer abc bakeries is the customer and the supplier or vendor who is the vendor here xyz xyz limited and what are the transactions made here uh, purchase, purchase order, order. sales order That's exactly sales order and the goods Invoice. receipt invoice invoice <clears throat> of course the delivery confirmation etc if any if i miss anything yeah finished goods as well so if the cake puff muffin whatever is there those we can say as finished products or finished uh, maybe we can say finished product that will be sold by abc bakeries to their customers again so we can think of this kind of data in this business scenario how we can categorize this data or how we can segregate data or how we can correlate this data to our master data concept if you talk about raw material can be a flour or sugar or milk or curd whatever it might be whoever is selling that the vendor 
they maintain that data in their database obviously let's say uh, for sugar what are the properties they can think of maybe the manufactured here or uh, some ingredients into that are the net weight gross weight weight unit price expiry date etc they will maintain that in the system let's say if they are selling that sugar to thousand customers they don't maintain that sugar information thousand times so here if we want to sell the sugar to thousand customers we just need to maintain the details about that sugar that's it the raw material and we can make multiple transactions out of that based on the number of customers or based on our business uh, uh, volume or whatever it may be take any raw material so those are not very frequently uh, changeable data we maintain once but as and when we find some uh, issues like some errors or whatever we correct them let's say here uh, they want to purchase the sugar uh, they want to sell the sugar uh, 500 kg okay per kg they might be charging maybe 30 rupees just an example i'm not sure about exact price so 30 rupees but they might have incorrectly mentioned as 20 rupees or 25 rupees then it is a loss for the seller and profit for the customer so when they realize when the seller realizes the mistake then what they can do they can correct that then that's mistake right so they have to correct that data so only when there are some errors or mistakes then only this data is subjected to change otherwise it just remains as is similarly the customer details who is the customer here abc bakeries the seller has this customer details in their database abc bakeries data so maybe the abc bakery is very frequent customer or regular customer to this xyz foods limited they don't uh, create the customer data or get their data in their uh, database regularly they don't do that initially they maintain the data if customer address is changed or maybe the uh, gst number is changed or contact numbers are changed then only they modify the data otherwise once they create the data then they just reuse that simple for the transactions so these transactions can be made on this data let's assume this data is not there raw material is not there customer is not there supplier not there finished products are not there then from where these transactions can be created nowhere so these transactions whatever we have we are seeing here are dependent on this data and this data is called as master data master data is key to any business to perform the business transactions and the master data is not a frequently maintained data or frequently modified data it is a key information which can be created once and can be maintained or updated on need basis only and the transactions are very frequently changed data in a day you can think of so many pos so many sales order so many goods received so many invoices so many deliveries are happening deliveries are happening so many transactions can be made of course based on your scale of the business so here that coming to the dependency the master data is not dependent on transactional data but the transactional data is dependent on the master data and the transactional data has a great impact when there is some error in the master data let's say this xyz foods limited transported the sugar to the abc bakeries but the abc bakeries address is wrong then the delivery will fail that is one case second case let's say the price error xyz foods limited updated their price uh, the price of the sugar at their uh, database incorrect then they'll get the loss or at least their profit uh, percentage is reduced another case maybe the weight has been updated wrongly for the sugar packet 
with the grass weight or net weight, whatever it might. Obviously, it is updated high, then they will be delivering less volume to the ABC bakeries. If the weight is updated low, then they will be delivering high volume to the ABC bakeries. Either way is a loss to either of these people. Obviously, that impacts these transactions. So whatever errors are there in the master data, that impact will be on the business transactions. So if there is some error at any case, then that will impact the business, obviously. This is the bottom line. So whatever the key master data is there for the business, that should have the proper quality. A good quality master data should lead to good quality or profitable transactions. And the master data should have the consistency, meaning, let's say, ABC bakeries. Maybe they are purchasing the sugar from XYZ Foods Limited. And they might be purchasing the milk from dairy. So if they are purchasing milk concord from that and dry fruits, maybe some from uh, maybe the Reliance or whoever, just an example. So at all the vendors, this ABC bakeries details should have a consistency. At one place, they have different address. At one vendor, they have different address. And another vendor, they have different address, GST. Then that leads to the inconsistency. So the data should be correct. And data should be reliable. Data shouldn't have any errors. Data should have the quality. There should not be any duplicate data. XYZ Foods should not maintain ABC bakeries details multiple times in their databases with the different different addresses or contact numbers. Then they will get confused to which address they have to deliver the products. Okay. So that kind of issues could occur if there are any errors in the data in terms of the quality or consistency or reliability. So to avoid all these challenges, SAP implemented one solution or a tool called master data governance govern the master data to ensure the quality consistency reliability on the master data so that the business transactions can have a good or potential growth now we are going to see how mdg can help and before that what are the other types of data we do have in sap so far, we had seen master data and transactional data. And what are the other types of data we, uh, we do also have in SAP? And what is important to us? As an MDG consultant, do we need to focus only on master data or transactional data or other data? And what are the various business challenges? So all those things we are going to discuss. Any questions from anyone? Yeah, hi, I'm good. Um, so the vendor and uh, the customer both should be on uh, you know both both the people should use sap or uh... it depends uh, either sap or non sap uh -huh. they can use anything okay so what are the other data yeah tanya i am going to explain that one. just wait for a while sir this master data i mean uh, preparing no duplicates right so where it uh, is placed, sir, is there any database for uh, for whole entire, uh, I mean, using, for example, one Nestle company is there, they are using some data, some X company is there, like that, these, these all our data comes to one database or different, differently they maintain. No, database but, is same. Within the database, we need to identify who, what are the duplicates and all. And we will discuss how to identify the duplicates and what are the actions can be taken on the duplicates also. Okay, sir. I mean, I am creating one material, for example. Another guy also same uh, creating that material. Yeah, that's what, I, they... that's what I'm saying. If both are creating same same kind of material, if the same data is being maintained, okay, so we will have some criteria to identify the duplicates, but the database is same. We don't have multiple databases for different different master data everything will sit in the same database centralized database sir. correct okay okay so uh, let's move on uh, to understand the various other types of data in a sec 